Welcome back. This is a small update about the OPEC meeting, which is to take place next week on the 1st and the 2nd of July. This is Peter Yosef, and with me is my colleague, Angelos Zetis, and with no time to waste, Angelos, what are the market's expectations about the OPEC meeting next week? Peter, it's good to be with you. Uh, the general expectation is that OPEC uh, could remain um, in line with its production cuts until the end of 2019. Mm -hmm. The question here is whether they will intensify the productions or whether they will keep them at, at the current levels. Mm -hmm. um, the question here, the second question that comes is what has, what effect has each scenario on oil prices? Mm -hmm. Now, if production cuts are to intensify, oil prices will be more sensitive to this mm -hmm. and they, they could be supported if production cuts are being intensified. Another, another idea that a lot of analysts support is that Towards the end of 2019, if production cuts remain at the current levels, at some point, demand for oil will exceed supply. Mm -hmm. So practically, we have here two takeaways. In case we have uh, a production cut deepening, then we could see oil prices being far more sensitive than they are now. And the second is that even with no production cuts deepening and keeping the current levels of production, demand could be surpassing supply and thus driving oil prices up. Yeah. Am I correct? More or less, that should be it. For the end of 2019. For the end of 2019, okay. Now, the OPEC meeting was originally scheduled for this week, if I'm correct. However, there has been lots of rumors and discussions and at the end it was postponed. What's the story there? Uh, I believe it was the right uh, right decision to make. Um, OPEC and its allies uh, certainly understand the importance of the upcoming G20 meeting. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, the G20 meeting is basically not the whole event, but the idea is that they could be waiting to see what will happen between the US and China when mm -hmm. Trump and Xi are meeting and what will be the outcome of the talks, because mm -hmm. they will talk. Mm -hmm. And um, the outcome will be, it will be very interesting for OPEC, for them to uh, form their own uh, views on what could happen in the oil market or uh, to make decisions on how to follow up on each scenario, because each scenario, whether they reach a deal, whether they they keep talking, or whether they have no deal, each scenario will will basically need a different approach from OPEC. Mm -hmm. And uh, the outcome of the meeting is very interesting. As I said, a lot of analysts believe that the G20 meeting could be positive. They have an optimistic view, view that they will find the solution. So, it's a good question, but what actually is expected to happen should the US and Chinese reach a deal, or even if they don't reach a deal and they show some progress towards that end, what could happen with OPEC? The thing between the US and China is that they're creating global uncertainty. Mm -hmm. All right, and this is this is making people panic, and people are very careful with their actions, and this interferes with demand for the oil market. Mm -hmm. So, if if a deal is brought forward, uh, a lot of a lot of reports out there are indicating that demand may pick up, mm -hmm. and by if demand is to pick up, maybe OPEC does not need to be so tight on production cuts. It could ease its stance, basically. Okay. Because uh, if demand is to increase, then they, they would be able to send, they will need to be selling more oil. And they could rebalance the, practically the market or the higher price? Higher prices. Yeah. Okay. Now, what happens in case of a no deal or even worse? Should tensions between the U.S. and China get even higher? 
that's basically where we are at the moment from, from where I see it. That's basically where we are at the moment because at the moment there's uncertainty. We don't know what's going to happen. There's tariffs. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of uh, back and forth on whether they will find, they will not find the solution. And we are heading to further production cuts. So it, it, I, I take the present as a no deal. Mm -hmm. And I say that OPEC could be aiming towards production cuts. Okay. So two takeaways again. Should there be an improvement of the US sign relationships, we could see OPEC keeping its current production levels unchanged or even play a little bit with them. However, should the US Sino relationship deteriorate, we could see OPEC deciding on deepening the production cuts in order to rebalance the market. Okay, but it's not only the US and China, which is the main issue of the G20 meeting, it's also the Iranian nuclear deal, which is also going to be discussed, and uh, Iran has been troubling the oil market for a while right now, and it's uh, an issue. Yeah, the, the matter with Iran is in the epicenter. Uh, it's very important. Um, the US and Iran tensions we could say that they're worsening. Mm -hmm. We had an incident with the ships, uh, explosions, then we had the drone. This week we had new US tariffs um, and now the US is targeting Iranian officials. And uh, it is it is a geopo geopolitical matter. Sure. Yeah. However, supply-wise, Iran it does not interfere with the oil market so, uh, some other other suppliers could replace iran mm -hmm. easily that's why we haven't seen a huge spike in oil prices mm -hmm. and um, e even though they they don't interfere with the supply because of what is happening at the strait of Hormuz, uh, they could they could interfere with prices mm -hmm. with okay. tensions Okay, now moving on a little bit further, the OPEC meeting next week is not going to be about only about OPEC members and Saudi Arabia, it's also going to be about Russia, which is a key player. So what has been the Russian position so far and will they actually follow OPEC's lead for production cuts? Should there be one? I think you said it nicely, uh, uh, Russia is, is a key player, key oil player. Um, in the latest months, Russian officials were quite indecisive whether to follow OPEC in production cuts. They believe that they are, with the production cuts, they are basically giving more market share to the Americans. The Americans are pumping more oil. And um, we, we didn't see, they didn't say for sure what they believe is Uh, what they what they all actions will be however in the latest days we found out that russia is now number one supplier to china mm -hmm. the number one supplier used to be the saudis now it's russia and in my opinion uh the russians may be may be favored by the saudis they may give more percentage from the supply to china to the Russians, and the Russians could follow the Saudis on the production cuts. Okay, so practically so they the can Saudis would be allowing the Russians to get them bigger market share. Helping each other, yeah. helping each other. And um, so you understand that uh, they have a pretty close relationship, Russia and uh, the Saudis. Yeah, we're discussing most of the things and the developments. However, it was interesting how you mentioned the Americans and the U.S. oil market. Actually, it was quite interesting yesterday when the EIA crude oil inventories was released. It was a massive drawdown of minus 12.8, almost 13 million barrels. At the same time, it showed that it is a very tight at the current stage oil market. And uh, the exports figures, the U.S. export figures are rising. They have reached almost 4 million barrels per day, which shows us that the U.S. is taking place more and more, a higher and higher market share. 
And it's quite interesting how the U.S. oil industry, industry may be threatening to fill in practically any gaps created by production cuts. It's quite interesting. However, given and discussing exports, how are OPEC's exports? Uh, we have, uh, if we can uh, move to the slide, yeah, oh, yeah. Th these are the uh, OPEC exports um, and they're broken down from April to May, from May to June uh, in million barrels per day. So the total crude for April was at 23.14. It dropped to 21.64 in May and it dropped even lower to 20.73. So we understand from here that the exports are dropping continuously yeah uh, however is this what opec is uh, is basically um doing deliberately so it could be a choice it could be a, a significant choice made by opec members specifically yes however you also mentioned compliance on the production cuts which opec decides how is that going uh production cuts uh we have another slide for this oh yeah okay and uh, these are the cuts and the compliance with the cuts so the the column to the right the last column to the right indicates the compliance percentage Okay, this is until the 31st of May, by the way, but it indicates that countries like Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, uh, Kuwait, and others have compliance over 100%. Of the cuts. Yeah. So what is the message here? The message here is basically they have excess capacity available at any time at uh, in case of an emergency, in case of they have excess um, capacity available. So practically what the chart is showing is that on the one hand we have the Saudis which are covering the cuts which other OPEC members may not be complying so well and on the other hand we have OPEC members which have an excess supply available at any given moment to supply the world with oil demand should anything happen. They are basically cutting down on supplies. Okay. Nice. Quite interesting figures. I would keep, though, the core issues in the key. And as practically, let's not forget that the G20 meeting could be result in an improvement of the U.S. sign relationships, in which case we could be seeing OPEC maintaining production levels the same. Mm -hmm. While should there be a deterioration, we could see OPEC deepening its production cuts. Yeah, intensify. In order to rebalance the oil market. So from all of us here at Iron FX, best wishes for solid trading.